Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to what blockchain is and some of the key terminologies of the blockchain technology. This blockchain technology plays a very important role in bringing trust to the peer-to-peer -peer networks. Before starting, I would like to quickly introduce myself. I'm Amrisha Gakoti and I'm working as a software engineer at Kpro Solutions Private Limited. Kpro is a leading provider in data lake, cloud implementations, IoT, blockchain, analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and mobile application development. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's video. So these are basically the topics that we'll be covering in this entire series of blockchain videos. So there are in total 17 modules. Now let us see the topics that we'll be covering in this video. They are, what is blockchain, distributed ledger technology, some important events regarding blockchain, terms related to blockchain, and what are the components of a single block. So let us start with what is blockchain. So what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word blockchain? Is it chain of blocks? Yeah, it makes sense, right? So yes, blockchain is nothing but a chain of blocks. But what do we exactly mean by chain of blocks? So to understand that, let us dig up a bit and understand what this blockchain is. So if I have to define blockchain, I'll say that it is a distributed ledger of immutable records distributed over a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now wait, I've used a lot of jargons here, right? So let me try to break them up and make you understand what these jargons mean. So let me start with what does this blockchain network consist of? So this blockchain network consists of a peer-to-peer -peer connection of nodes. Now, what do we mean by peer-to-peer? -peer? So by peer-to-peer, -peer, I mean that every node in this network is connected to every other node. This means there is a connection between each and every node in this network. Now, before moving far further, I would like to tell you what these nodes are. So these nodes are nothing but the computers with the capabilities of doing the things that are typically done in blockchain. So what happens in this blockchain network is that, so let me consider that currently there are four blocks in this blockchain, although in reality there will be thousands of blocks, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm considering four blocks. This being the first ever block created in the blockchain network, which is also known as the Genesis block. And this is the current block or the last block created. So what happens in this blockchain network is that this entire chain of blocks will be distributed over the network. This means that every node in the network will have a copy of this chain of blocks. So every node will have a copy of this chain of blocks. Now, since we have seen what this peer-to-peer -peer network is and what a node is, I guess now we can understand what this blockchain is. So basically, blockchain is nothing but a chain of blocks which are distributed over a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now let us see what a block consists of. So a block is nothing but a record book which records the transactions happened in the blockchain network chronologically. Now here the term chronologically is very important because you cannot uh, alter the sequence in which the, the transactions have been entered in this block. So for example, if I'm considering this blockchain and this being the first ever block created in a network, so it will hold the transactions that have happened at the beginning of the network. And this will hold the transactions that happened during the creation of this block. So your, all these transactions will be recorded in a chronological order. Now, when I'm talking about transactions, for simplicity, you can visualize this transaction as any monetary transaction. But in reality, transactions does not only involve money, but also any other asset. So now let me see if I've covered everything that I have mentioned on this slide. So it is a distributed database of immutable records called blocks, which are secured using cryptography. Yes. So these transactions that have been entered in this block will be secured using some cryptographic algorithms so that they cannot be tampered with. Holds the ledger of transactions from the creation of the first block of the chain. So yes. This will hold the ledger of transactions starting from the first block to the current block. 
the blocks are distributed over a peer-to-peer -peer network this we have seen right so all this chain of blocks will be distributed over this peer-to-peer -peer network it is a distributed ledger which is completely open to anyone now what do i mean by this this means that any computer can become a node provided it has the required hardware and software specifications so once it becomes a node it can take part in this blockchain network and once it becomes a part of this blockchain network it can have all this ledger of transactions that is starting from the first ever transaction to the current transaction to itself and it can also take part in transaction process or uh, and it it has equal freedom or equal responsibility as any other node in this network so this is what is meant by it is completely open to anyone they have an interesting property that once some data has been recorded inside a blockchain it becomes very difficult to change it so yes this is what is meant by immutable records so once a transaction is recorded in a block in this blockchain it is next to impossible to change or alter it how we cannot change it we'll see in the later slides so this is what is meant by blockchain next let us see what is the distributed ledger technology so this distributed ledger technology is the concept on which this blockchain is based so it is a database that is spread across several nodes or computing devices on our last slide we saw that the chain of blocks is distributed over the peer to peer network right so here this database is nothing but a chain of blocks which contains the transactions happening in the network and is spread across all the nodes in the network each node replicates and saves an identical copy of the ledger again this we have seen on the previous slide we saw that every node in the uh, network will have an identical copy of the chain of blocks starting from the first ever block created to the current block next each participant node of the network updates itself independently so whenever a new block is created in the blockchain network every node taking part in the network will update its local copy of blockchain on its own so they do not depend on any central authority to update their local copy of blockchain so this is what is meant by each participant node of the network updates itself independently the feature of distributed ledger technology is that the ledger is not maintained by any central authority yes right updates to the ledger are independently constructed and recorded by each node this we have seen the nodes then vote on these updates to ensure that the majority agrees with the conclusion reached now to make you understand this point i would like to go back to my previous slide here you look at this diagram let us consider that this block of this node and this block of this node gets tampered with so now what will happen is that there is something called consensus by which all the nodes present in a network will agree upon a single copy of ledger so when this consensus mechanism is applied these nodes will find that these two nodes have a different copy of ledger than theirs so what these nodes will do is that they will simply discard these two copy of ledgers so they will simply discard these two copy of ledgers and update these two nodes with their own copy of ledger so this is what happens during the consensus mechanism now let me go back to the next slide Yes, so the nodes then vote on these updates to ensure that the majority agrees with the conclusion reached. This voting and agreement on one copy of the ledger is called consensus and is conducted automatically by a consensus algorithm. Once consensus has been reached, the distributed ledger updates itself and the latest agreed upon version of the ledger is saved on each node separately. so this is basically what a distributed ledger technology is next let us see the history of blockchain so in 1991 stuart haber and w scott stornita performed the first ever work on cryptographically secure chain of blocks which was mainly implemented 
to timestamp documents so that they cannot be tampered with. In 1992, Bear, Haber and Stornetta incorporated Merkle trees to the design. Now wait, we haven't come across this Merkle trees concept, right? So I would like to give you a brief overview of what this Merkle tree is. Now let us consider a block which has four transactions. There are T1, T2, T3, T4. Let me write down these transactions like this. So these are the transactions T1, T2, T3, T4. Now what will happen is that these individual transactions will be passed through some hash function and the corresponding hash values of these transactions will be found out. For example, the hash value of T1 is D1, T2 is D2, T3 is D3 and T4 is D4. Now what happens is that these two hashes will be concatenated and again pass through a hash function to find the corresponding hash values of these two concatenated hashes. Similarly with these two, D3 and D4, again concatenation will happen and again another hash would be found out. So for example, the hash of D1 and D2 I'm considering as D12 and the hash of D3 and D4 I'm considering as D34. So this concatenation and rehashing process will be continued until we are left with just one hash for all the transactions present in the block. So finally, these two hashes will be concatenated and another hash would be found out, which is called the hash of the Merkle root. So this is basically what the Merkle tree is. So if you want to know more about the Merkle tree and the hashing, you can follow my other video on Merkle tree and hashing whose link I have put on the description below. Improved its efficiency by allowing several documents to be collected into one block. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto conceptualized first blockchain. And in 2009, the first blockchain was implemented, which I'm sure you'll, you guys know is the Bitcoin. So this is all about the history of blockchain. Next, let us see some important events regarding blockchain. So in 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto released the white paper, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. In 2009, Bitcoin was offered to the open source community. In 2010, the currency exchange market was established by Jad McCaleb. In 2015, Ethereum was launched. 2017, Bitcoin splits into Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So whenever I'm, I'm giving the theoretical description about the blockchain, I'll consider the Bitcoin blockchain as the reference blockchain. So yes, these are all about the, some of the events regarding blockchain. Next, let us see some of the terms related to blockchain. So what is this block header? So this block header is nothing but the metadata at the top of each block. So this block header has a few fields which I'll be describing right now. So the first one is the version number. So it is a four byte field and it is used to keep track of all the upgrades and changes that have happened on the blockchain network. The next one is the previous hash. So it is a 32 byte field and it links to the previous block and is also used to secure the chain. The next one is the Merkle root hash. So it is a 32 byte field and it is the hash of the root of the Merkle tree of the blocks transactions. This we saw right, right on, uh, on a previous slide. The next one is the timestamp. So it is a four byte field and it is, it is the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. This is difficulty. So this difficulty is a four byte field and it is the number of zeros that must be found when hashing the block header in order to meet the required level of proof of work to maintain the block time at 10 minutes. Now here I said to maintain the block time at 10 minutes, right? So this is basically regarding the Bitcoin blockchain. So what happens in the Bitcoin blockchain is that to create a block, it should take approximately 10 minutes. So this difficulty field makes sure that it takes approximately 10 minutes to create a block. The last but not the least is the NANS, which is a four byte field and it is the counter used by the miners to generate the correct hash. 
Now we haven't come across the term minors, right? So these minors are nothing but the computers that are engaged in creating blocks, creating and validating blocks. So it is the value that is altered by the minors to try different permutations to achieve the difficulty level required. So what did I say about this difficulty level? So this difficulty says that the hash that the miners are finding or while creating the block, these miners are trying to find the required hash. So this difficulty says that that hash or whatever, the hash is nothing but a hexadecimal number, right? So that hash should be, should have a certain number of leading zeros. So this minus keep altering the nonce value to get the required number of leading zeros. So this nonce is nothing but the random number. And this minus keep incrementing this nonce value to get the required difficulty. So these are basically the, some of the terms related to blockchain. Next, let us see the components of a single block. So let us consider this to be the snapshot of the blockchain. This being the NH block, this is the N plus one block, and it's the N plus two block. So we all know that all these blocks will have the block header. So these are the block header with the fields, version number, Merkle root, hash of the previous block, nuns, difficulty. Now, if I consider this block, that is N plus one block, you'll see in the field of hash of the previous block, you'll have the hash of block N because this is the previous block to this block. Now, in addition to this block header, we will have another thing, which is the list of transactions. That is the, all the transactions that are grouped in this block. So when all these things are passed through the hash function, it gives us the hash of the current block. So this is basically what a single block consists of and how a hash of a block is found out. So let us have a quick recap of what are the things that we covered in this video. So in the beginning, we learned about what the blockchain is. Next, we saw the distributed ledger technology. Then we saw the history of blockchain where we also saw what the Merkle tree looks like. Then we had the, some important events regarding blockchain. Then we learned about a few terms related to blockchain. And finally, what are the components of a single block or how the hash of a block is found out. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the blockchain network and the mining nodes and how does a block get mined. Kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section below and let us know of any topic you want us to make a video of or any issue you might be facing in your project. You may write to us at feedback at kpro.co.in. Thank you very much. Let's keep learning.